Oh yeah, she's getting hot now, ladies and gents. Good evening, everyone. We got something a little bit different for you today. And yes, thank you, my mustache is beautiful. If you couldn't tell, it's pretty cold outside, about 20 degrees to be precise. And it gets a little cold out here in the shop. Now, yes, I have a propane heater, and yes, it does work pretty good. But after running that propane heater for about eight hours on end, your head does get a little light while you're working on the cars. So I have a solution for that. One that will either heat the garage without putting off any CO or burn the garage down. And that solution is this monstrosity right here. This right here is two 10 inch pipe tees welded together. As you can tell, I'm not really a very good pipe welder. So this was just some scrap pipe that I had laying around a job site. And what I plan to do with it is turn it into kind of a makeshift homemade wood burning stove. There's all sorts of different ways to go about making a wood burning stove, but the way that I've chosen is kind of similar to what you'd see in a boiler. So you've got your firebox down here where you burn your wood, make your heat source. That heat travels up through the bulkhead and into the top where it hits a bunch of heat exchangers, tubes, pipes, whatever you want to do. And then you run air across that exchanger to bring that heat from inside the stove to the outside. A little bit primitive, but it should work. I'm gonna build this using mostly scrap that I've laying around, but you could find a pipe supplier and buy all these parts yourself if you wanted to. As you can tell, I've already got the body together. I've got a lug on top so I can pick it up with a hoist and carry it around. So there's a few things left to do. First of all, I gotta get some kind of legs on it because if you leave the firebox like that, just touching the ground, it's gonna destroy my poor concrete. Second of all, you gotta cap off one end of the firebox and then put a swinging door on the front. Not sure how I'm gonna seal that door. I think they make like a nice, like a rope kind of seal thing. So I'm gonna have to do a little bit of internet research, but something like that should work just fine. And then up top, I've gotta to make my tube bundle or heat exchanger core. I've gotta decide how to do that. I'll have to have a plate on this side and a plate on that side, have a bunch of holes drilled in it and then slide a bunch of tubes through and weld them to the plate so that it seals off the smoky, nasty air from the outside air. Now, ideally, the best way to exchange the most heat out of this would be using a bunch of small tubes that you layer in here and have hundreds and hundreds of them. But since I'm lazy and limited to the resources that are available. I may end up using a little bit larger pipe, not to mention that'll save a lot of time welding if I only had to weld nine or 10 tubes versus a hundred. And finally, I got to blast a hole in the top, put a chimney on it, and run it somewhere up in the ceiling. So with that, let's get to cutting and grinding and drilling and welding and sawing, and burning, all that good stuff. All right, well, it turns out that circles are kind of hard. I don't have any burning equipment here at home, so I started out with a Sawzall, had to scrap that plan almost immediately, and then went to the cutoff wheel and ended up cutting somewhat of a hectagon to uh, get it to work. They roughly look like circles, a little grind here and there, and she'll look just right. So these two guys here will be my tube sheets for the top level. Now that I'm done with that, I don't have any tube yet, so we'll move on to something different. Here we have a very soggy end cap. This is what I'll use to be the end of my firebox on the lower level. As you can tell, it's been sitting outside for a bit. It's got leaves, water, and ice in it. We'll go ahead and polish up this edge here, polish up our crusty trusty over there and get to welding. So we got the back of our firebox welded in and it's not the ugliest thing I've ever done. I'm basically just doing a root pass on these guys. I'm not concerned about putting a big meaty cap on it because it's not going to have any pressure on it as long as it's 
pretty airtight, then that's good enough for me. So what I'm gonna do next is take these two plates with the heat exchanger up top. I'm gonna get them as lined up as I can on top of each other so that they're perfectly lined up. And then tack a couple times around the edges so that they stay together. Now the reason I'm tacking them together for now is so I can drill all my holes for the tubes that are gonna go through here and know that the pattern will be identical on both plates. That way when I set these plates 20 inches apart and start sliding tubes through, I know they'll fit just right. So let's get these dudes lined up and tacked. All right, so we got our 10 holes drilled here in our tube sheets. That was a massive pain in the butt. If you couldn't tell from the mega speed time lapse, but that was not very fun. Hole sawing through about half inch of steel, not a good time. So up next, we're ready to cut my tack welds out, separate these two plates and get them grinded and prepped to be welded into the shell. So we've got our tube sheets welded on there, front and back. And you might not have been able to see because the time lapse was pretty quick, but I test fit those tubes in there after I tack welded this first one just to make sure that they would slide in and out. All right. It's gonna be a little bit tricky to fit those dudes up and tack weld them before they start getting all whopper jawed because of how this cap is on the back here. Had I thought a little harder, I probably would have put these tubes in before I welded that cap on because now that bottom tube sheet is not on the ground there, which makes it a little tricky to set these guys. So to make sure if something goes wrong and I need to reach inside here to grab one of these tube sheets, I've always got this bottom access here through the firebox. But if I weld this bottom row first, I won't be able to reach through here and get to the top row if I accidentally drop one in or something. So the key with this, start with the top, make sure they're done and progress down towards this firebox where I can still reach in and get up to there. Otherwise we might get ourselves in a tricky situation. So let's quit being goobs and start tacking tubes.
All right, moving right along. We got tubes. That's a little hot still. Oops. Here's our heat exchanger tubes. Again, here's our firebox. Let a big old fire in here. It'll come up through this area. Hit these tubes, and then I'll have a fan on the backside. It's gonna blow all that air out into the garage area. By the way, I've decided to nickname this thing the beater heater because it's a heater. And what is it heating? Well, it's heating some beaters. We got our old beater over there. We got that old beater right there. And of course we got that beater, big old beautiful piece of junk right there. So the old beater heater is coming together. All that's left, we got to fit a door on here somehow. A swinging door with preferably one of those rope gaskets so that it doesn't let all the spark and flame come into the garage and light everything I own on fire. Then we're going to put legs on it because I don't know if you know, but a round object doesn't sit very good on a concrete floor. Then we got to fit a chimney on this dude somehow. I'm thinking four inch, but I may have to go to the old chimney store and see what they got. I'm not sure if it's four inch or three inch, but whatever it is, I'll have to get whatever closest adapter I can get, cut a hole in the top, adapt it so that it fits chimney parts. And then of course build the chimney, which means I got to drill a hole in my ceiling. That's not very fun. And how could I forget? We got to fit a fan on that backside somehow so that we can transport that hot air through the tubes and out the face of it right there. Moving right along. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have liftoff. Got my way overkill stand here, built out of four inch C-channel. I wanted to stick with my weird looking industrial design on this, so I figured the one-sided stand was pretty neat. Then you got a crossbar with a couple feet on the bottom, and then nothing over here on this side, so it kind of gives the appearance that it's floating. The only weld that's really in question here on how strong it needs to be is this base one because you basically just got a butt weld on the end of that C channel right into another piece that's supporting the whole weight of this whole deal. I'm fairly confident in it but of course that's when one of my contact tips decided to go bad on me so it's not very pretty. Next thing we're going to do here is cut out a door and a backing plate for the door and I got to figure out some kind of hinge on here so that I've got some way to swing it open swing it back closed and then the point of that backing plate is to give the rope seal somewhere to sit against so that when i shut the door it keeps all the sparks and popping wood in there and not on my floor
All right, a little status update here. We have got our door and latch installed. I made the decision to go with one two inch hinge. Hopefully that's strong enough. There is a little bit of play in it, so that's not ideal. But as long as I don't bang it against anything too hard, I think it'll be all right. I had to add this piece of flat bar in here to give the hinge something to weld to, but it ended up working out all right. I bent it a little bit to fit the profile of the shell there and then welded all three sides of that. You can see I got the gasket in here just as a spacer. And then that gave me the bright idea to do it here on the other side as well for my latch mechanism. Still gotta figure out a handle device on this guy, but I like this, how this works. I put another piece of flat bar here, notched it, so that you just lift up on that latch, it swings out just like a furnace door should. Then you bring your handle back in and down into the latch, and you're good to go. Next up, we're gonna extend the shell up top here. I've already cut my extension piece down there. And then we're gonna put our back plate in it. This is where our heater fan is gonna go. I welded four bolts to the back side of that because once this is in there, you'll never be able to access those again. And the fan that circulates the hot air through the tubes will blow right through that hole and circulate hot air through the tubes. And here we are after way too long of a time. The stove itself is finally done. I've got my rope seal gasket glued on there just right. They said you're supposed to have a fire in this thing before it's fully cured, so gotta get to burning before it uh, falls off, I suppose. I've got my stove to chimney adapter up top there. Now I just took and coped a piece of single wall, six inch chimney. I TIG welded that seal shut just to make sure I never would have any problems with it. And then I put this fire block paste in there. I TIG welded it down, but TIG welding 20 gauge sheet metal to half inch thick wall pipe T, it's not ideal. It wasn't the best uh, weld in the world. So I went ahead and put that fire block on there to hopefully get it relatively airtight. You can see we still got some paint drying here. I got some high temp paint normally used for headers on a vehicle, but I think they'll work just all right for this. If it gets too hot, it'll just flake off and that's all right. At least we tried. And finally, I got my little blower plate welded on the back here. You can see my little bolt pattern there to bolt my blower up to. Got it welded around so it is secure and ready for operation. So I'm gonna let the paint dry on this bad boy, get her into position. And then finally, last thing we got to do is plumb up the chimney. And here she is the semi finished product i got a little bit loaded up here in the firebox for a test run got my chimney running up to the top here with a little 90 to a 45 dealio you drill an eight inch hole in your wall and then you bolt that on over top of it and then i got that silver piece there is triple wall chimney pipe and that's what you use to pass through the wall there it's got insulation in between the walls and so that'll keep it from wanting to get too hot and burning your garage down. And then on the outside, it just 90s up and one two foot piece was enough to get it a little bit above my roof line and that's perfect. Then you put a little rain cap on there. 
I put a T actually instead of a 90 so that I can clean it out in the future if I want to. You can pull the cap on the bottom of that T and then run a brush back through this dude or up to your rain cap. So we're gonna give her a little test run here and see how she does. As you can see, based on this thermometer, we're sitting at about 26, 27 degrees right now in the garage. So let's get her lit and get going. I got decent kindling in there. It's not great, but it'll work for what we're trying to do. And of course you could sit here with matches and, or even a little propane torch and that would work, but I've got cheat codes here. And so we're gonna hasten the process. All right, so here we are about an hour and a half into this experiment. And I got my fire burning pretty strong. I gotta leave the door cracked for now. I added these uh, speed holes here for some airflow. And unfortunately it's not quite enough. So I'm gonna have to drill some more holes. Maybe make a slider that I can put over that to regulate the airflow a little bit. But as you can see, I've got a nice burning fire inside quite toasty you can hear the fan running right now i got it on the low speed so that you can hear me speak but normally i keep it on the high speed to get as much air out of it as possible i gotta mess with it a little bit to determine what's the uh, best procedure for air here if it's best to keep it on low or if you just crank it all the time and i don't know we'll find out and yes i do keep my propane bottles right there right here next to my wood heater so if I stop posting videos, I'm probably exploded. So if we check our temperature here, it's about 60 degrees in here. So that brought us from 28 to 60. And of course that's only with an hour of burn time. So obviously if we let it go two, three hours, who knows, it might be 75, 80 in here, which would be a little too warm in my opinion. But 60, 65 degrees out here in the winter when it's 20 or so outside, Pretty, pretty perfect. All right, we got the glove on so that we can stand this here. Just trying to see how hot the air is coming out because I know it's quite toasty. 100, 120, and we're settling right here around 130. So 130 degree air, a little bit more. It's still climbing. There's still room to go, but my hand's about to light fire, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull it away here. So that'll do. In my opinion, 130 is, is good enough for me for a homemade first try here at a wood heater. Not too bad. So now that I've got this project done, it's taken me Lord knows long enough, we'll be getting back to some car stuff. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more goofy crap like this that I come up with in my free time. And I suppose I'll be seeing you in the next one.